the Army has finally and officially announced the winner for the MPF contract, the Griffin II from General Dynamics. Now that it's in low rate initial production, I thought I would make a video going over the vehicle specifications. It doesn't have an official name yet, so I'll just call it MPF for now. Given the massive protrusion over the barrel, if they don't call it Rhino, I'll be very disappointed. Alternatively, they could name it Schwarzkopf. That would also be acceptable. Some people have been very confused by the MPS for all specifications. It is essentially an air transportable light tank, designed to go places where the M1 Abrams can't. The main limiting factor for the M1 is its weight. Many bridges simply cannot support it, meaning that it could slow down operations. The MPF is not a traditional light tank though, as it cannot be airdropped. Instead, it'll be rolled off of C-17s that land at secured airfields. It doesn't help that the Army is emphatic that the MPF is in a tank, despite meeting the definition. They're pretty hesitant to do so for a good reason. They don't want MPF crews to pick fights with tanks. It can do so if necessary, but it isn't ideal for the task. The MPF is supposed to be more of a self-propelled gun, so think of it as a striker MGS that isn't garbage. Its mission statement is to provide infantry units with, quote, firepower necessary to apply lethal sustained long-range fires to armored vehicles, think IFEs and APCs, hardened enemy fortifications, and dismounted personnel. To do this, the MPF is equipped with the 105 M35 lightweight cannon. This gun is actually quite old, being developed for use in the armored gun system program. It can fire the full suite of 105 ammo, including the APFSDS round M900. M900 is pretty old, but against the majority of MBTs that the MPF could fight, it's still perfectly fine. Now as far as total ammo capacity, that's not exactly known. Since the MPF hasn't fully entered service yet, many details are still classified. However, we can still glean important details from the program's requirements. For example, it's required that the MPF have at least 21 stowed rounds. I think that given its sheer size, it probably has more than that. There is one downside to using the M35, and that is that it uses many different ammo types for different situations. It has canister for infantry, heat for light vehicles, and high explosive plastic for structures. To solve this problem, Orbital ATK, now owned by Northrop Grumman, has been contracted to make an advanced multi-purpose round, or AMP. Now AMP is already in service, just not on the 105. There's a 120 version of AMP called M1147, so it should be pretty easy to scale down. AMP greatly increases effective ammo capacity, since the vehicle only has to carry two ammo types. The turret is more or less a scaled down version of the M1 turret, and uses many of the same systems. This was a deliberate choice, as it makes it easier for crews to become familiar with it. Even if they've never been on an M1 themselves, at least it should make the instructors more comfortable as well. One new piece of turret kit is the Pazio sight from Safran Optics. It's a third gen thermal sight, and has a panoramic scan mode. On the MPF, it's used as a CITV. For armor, the MPF is supposed to be protected against kinetic threats. Most likely this means 30mm AP rounds, like the kinds used by Russian BMPs. Call me skeptical, but I doubt it's spec to resist rounds from MBTs. Overhead protection is also listed, meaning airburst artillery fragments. For the underbody, it lists protection from RPGs and EFPs as optional. EFPs are explosively formed penetrators, usually mines or IEDs. I'm going to assume this is referring to the lower side or lower front, because somehow I doubt that RPGs are going to be fired at the MPF from below. Maybe if the MPF crosses a trench and the infantry are desperate? Who knows. Anyway, the armor packages are modular, and an active protection system can be mounted. There are renders of it with the Iron Fist system used by Israel, so it would likely use that. Iron Fist is light, has four charges, and great coverage. Much like the M1 Abrams, the MPF has blow-up panels for the ammunition. This means that if the ammunition is struck, there's a good chance the crew will be unharmed. Requirements for mobility are pretty simple. It has to be able to keep up with the unit, has to be able to pivot steer, also known as neutral steer, and has to sustain 40 miles per hour. For our metric friends, that's 64 kilometers per hour. Fully loaded, it weighs around 38 short tons. That's around 34 metric tons. As mentioned earlier, a C-17 has to be able to transport two of them, with roll-on, roll-off capability. After being offloaded, the MPF can be combat-ready quickly. For its engine, it has the Detroit Diesel MT-881. This was originally developed by MTU. It's a six-cylinder diesel, and provides 1,000 horsepower. It's already used by the K-9 Thunder and Panzer Hobbits 2000, so it's a proven engine. However, as the MPF matures, it'll likely swap to the ACE engine. I talked about it in the Abrams X video, but assuming you haven't watched it, it's a scalable post-piston diesel. The army wants to shove it in everything. MBTs, IFVs, APCs, trucks, you name it. It's variable from 750, 1000, and 1500 horsepower. The MPF would probably use the 1000 horsepower version. That has four cylinders. Its main benefit is making logistics a lot easier. The MPF has around 26 horsepower per ton. 
Coupled to the engine is a 3040MX transmission, made by Allison. This is a hydromechanical cross-drive transmission, and it's automatic as well. It's based on the older X300, which was installed in vehicles such as the Warrior, CV90-120, and HST-VL. If it's anything like the X300, the MPF should be able to reverse at full speed. The suspension is a hydro-pneumatic type, made by Horstman. It offers superior off-road mobility and ride quality, though apparently on the prototype, it had some overheating issues. Allegedly, this has been fixed on the LREP models. GDLS has emphasized that the MPF can be easily upgraded, and has plenty of headroom to do so. For example, the Griffin has already mounted the 120XM360 cannon. They've also already drawn up plans for an autoloader. This might be something the Army could be interested in, since recruitment numbers haven't been the greatest. Thanks to the modular armor packages, the MPF should be able to keep up with emerging threats. As part of the current contract, 96 MPFs will be built for low-rate initial production. Though in the coming decades, the Army wants to procure at least 500. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got for now. If you guys have suggestions for video topics, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know what you think of MPF. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.